So Jack is going in, back to the film, Jack is going in, and when I say Jack, Nicholson and Torrance, because the character's name is Jack, he's going in for an interview with Mr. Ullman, who is the manager of the Overlook Hotel. Um, And they sit down and they exchange pleasantries. And then we cut to Wendy and Danny, his wife and his young son. They're eating sandwiches. She's reading The Catcher in the Rye. Smoking, always smoking in this movie, and she makes Shelly? it look so cool. Yeah, and it's just like the way she smokes. I actually, yeah, I like love that, 19- that she smokes. Like sometimes I'm like, it. it's gratuitous smoking in movies, but I'm like, for her character, it's perfect. No, mm-hmm. she's he's the child is eating a sandwich and she's smoking. So funny, like just next to him, I love yeah. it. It's like how I grew up, my dad smoking around mm. us explains a lot. So um, after that, we find that uh, little Danny has a an imaginary friend named Tony. And he uses a right. finger puppet. Oh, to- yikes. In my head, I kept creepy? going, how funny would it be if they, for the remake, they had Tony played by Tony Danza? And he was just <laughs> doing the, it's just, hey, are well, they remaking it? I think it? there's ghosts in here, buddy. I hope not. Are oh, they oh. remaking this? What? Are they remaking No, no. Oh, you're just saying if they did. They were about did. to remake Salem's a lot, which I was excited about, but then they stopped with that, too. Nice. But, also, uh, I read somewhere that uh, Danny, uh, the little boy, when they were casting this, he's the one that came up with the finger. Puppet. Oh wow! That really? was his move. Yeah, because I he's thought that great he's fantastic, and he stopped. He's smart because he got out of show business. That's cool. What does he do now? Um, I have no idea. He's happy. Um, okay, so then we're back, and now Jack and Mr. Ullman. Ullman's explaining why they shut down for the winter um, mm-hmm. because it's the road is impassable. It's twenty five miles of road, heavy storms, and. As the caretaker. So scary. Right? Can it you really imagine? is creepy from the beginning. From the moment it starts. The music. Do you know what yeah. I love about this movie, too? And it was when I was re-watching, I was like, there are no jump scares. And so many horror movies. There's like, one. Which no, one? No, there's one that I actually went, <gasps> and it's not when he, maybe it's when he kills... Uh, well, Dick that's in that's the that's end. the one jump scare. Yeah. Oh, that is the one. Oh, but it's he, really he scary. has he. But what Kubrick does in this, and I, I'm now I'm starting like a filmer. But this was like rewatching this. I was like, God, this guy is kind of a genius because it was like mm-hmm. almost all the scary things about this movie are from the camera angles and the music. Mm. And the music increases when the terror of Shelley Duvall is increasing. And then it gets really narrow. The camera gets really narrow. Um, and it's like, it's none of that. Because we're so used to now, like we watch like Insidious or all these mm-hmm. like like Bloomhouse ones where it's just like you woke up and there's like an old woman as a nurse going like, uh-huh, you know, uh-huh. like, and this is just all mood. And I'm right, like, wow, right, this right. is pretty phenomenal that he was able to yeah. capture that. Especially you know? when he's following like Danny on his little trike bike right. down hallways. Ah! And, it's, and you're like, what is he going to come across? What is going to pop in front of? It's interesting also speaking to the AI thing. Like it's interesting how like the elegance of certain filmmaking or even TV making is... Um, makes you feel dignified as a human being. Yeah. You know, like, mm-hmm. there is something so, like, I don't mean, like, actually, like, sexual, but, like, hot about The Shining that is, like, I don't know, you feel um, included in something beautiful, even though it's so scary. It's so, like, cool and smart. I think you're right, because it's us and them, and that's it. There's nobody else really there. So once the place shuts down and it is right, just right, the family, right, right. it's us, the viewer, with them right. experiencing and it's such a big things. open space. It does feel like you could, even like with a, an audience full of people, it feels like you could be there with them. Yep. It's, it's freaky. Yeah. And I, I also think with the, you know, reading the book and then, you know, seeing both versions of the miniseries, well, the movie and then the reading miniseries. The Brad. Like what they try to do. You get do, it. You can <laughs> read. You <laughs> read. <laughs> Only read half. Um, but what they try to do with him <laughs> is that, like, he kind of goes on more of a journey in a book and, and, uh, and the series, which I think works against the move the it's why the movie is superior because like he's like trying in the beginning like you know he's like oh i'm, I'm making up for the back because i heard danny in the past i don't want to do this mm-hmm. you know and he's like trying to be nice and in the movie it's just he's just a dick to her the whole fucking time oh for he's the terrible most part. to her you know like and but i think that works for it because she's like because he starts off a dick and then he goes crazy so i'm like well this woman has no like she's and, in an abusive like and she was on set too. She was abusive. abused on set as far as like psychologically and by Kubrick, Kubrick and Nicholson. Nicholson. They would like scream at her, yeah, which is awful. But I was also like, 
But that's, that's why how, she's so fucking good in this. Yeah, too? that's how they did it though. Like those those scenes that they, you know, followed her with the bat. That whole scene, I think they did like a hundred and twenty seven times or something. That is so abusive. And he was like, again, scarier, scarier. And you watch that, and whatever take he used, it is the most frightening thing ever. That is so scary, and that is like truly how um, TV and film used to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Especially film is like um, actual abuse and to get statutory that. rape. Oh yeah, like well, la- well, last <laughs> tangle in Paris. I'm not laughing about the rape. Last well, tangle I'm in Paris is like a hurts. big example of that. <laughs> that's yeah. right. That's I was I was just like, what is the one? And it's that. And it's, it's like um, art, like good one. You know, it, it, it's uh, if you watch the making <sighs> of with Kubrick, is it, I mean the making of his daughter makes it, and it's interesting because they, it's on YouTube. You guys can go check it out now. It's only like 17 minutes. Um, but they they broadcast. There was a version which it was Kubrick's version and Kubrick's daughter's version, and they used Kubrick's daughter's version because that's the one that ha- Kubrick wanted to edit himself out, and that's the one where you have Kubrick kind of being salty with Shelley Duvall mm-hmm. and all this other stuff. But it is kind of like eye opening. You do wonder, like, did they? Is this why the performance was so good? Yeah, of course. Cool. What's annoying is that it makes the case. It's like this feat loop where it's like well we had to get that performance because it's so good we have to abuse women yeah. on screen you don't so need that do. we get right. no that was his method as yeah. opposed to being like just be scared he's like I'm gonna fucking make you scared I'm yeah gonna and it it's like you. men I guess all the stories were about men being abusive and women being abused so mm-hmm. it just like was this feedback loop of like this is how we tell these stories accurately right that's how we get that there's, there's also like even to get away from the male female dynamics like there's a Werner Herzog movie where like they almost kill each other, Werner Herzog and the lead actor. I forget what it is now. They had a real weird relationship. But there's a moment where, like, you could see all the guys want to kill the lead actor, like, because he got, like, In indigenous the movie, speakers. You yeah, he got indigenous. And they all want to, like, literally kill. So I think it was just, like, the 70s, 80s style of filmmaking yeah. where it's like chaos, chaos, chaos. And that's true. And Stephen King also did not like this version of Wendy. He thought she was very weak. And yeah. the, the Wendy that he created was a stronger more self-sufficient but we do see spots of her because she's doing all the caretaker work which we'll we'll get into so now we're with mr ullman mr ullman then explains that jack says he's a writer oh i'm gonna write i'm a teacher and i'm gonna write and all this stuff he tells him about charles grady who was a former caretaker who ended up going crazy in the solitude and he killed his wife and his two daughters. He yeah. chopped them up. Which and is then, a daughter and a son in, a, in the book. Oh, it is a daughter and they're not twins. They're not twins. Ne- but in the movie, they're, they're the twins. twin girls. Come and play. Which works better. Mm-hmm. You know? Those creepy twins. We love them. Yeah. So that, uh, yes. Yeah, so and then the Grady blew his brains out. And that is how he welcomes Jack into this new role of character. Like Welcome. Perfect. I can't wait to murder my <laughs> wife. I fucking but hate. But you know what? I, in that he scene, does hate her. He's I was like, does. that is creepy. But like, if we really knew the history of every apartment we moved into in New York City, we would, we oh would be God. living on the street. You yeah. Know? And like, by the way, also the fact that like anything that's built is built on some sort of a burial ground in New right. York City. Right. And so even if you're living in a brand new high rise, whatever was there before. And by the way, the Overlook also built on an Indian burial ground. Well, that's, that's another What's theory. What's the Overlook? In the, well, the oh, theory, oh, it oh. is mentioned in the book that Maybe. it is, but like... The, like the theory is that the, it's this angry spirits of Cherokee. I thought are, the overlook was like a new Hudson Yards. Situation. <laughs> like, it does look like it. It does. does it like feels it. like it. Yeah. Uh, Sounds like something like Jared Kushner secretly finances. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> 